Welcome back to Blackboard Discussion on Demand and Supply in Equilibrium, and this is the second discussion about supply. This is where we left off last time with these prices and quantity supplied, and the key was that what we were going to do is talk about cost, that there's something to do with the supply curve and cost. Let's think about that now. Here's a picture of those numbers. At $5, we said this person or a supplier or producer was willing to produce 600 hot dogs per day. So I've got 600 here, $5 there, and I put a dot there. At $4, what was it? At $4, he was going to put 400 hot dogs. So $4, 400, I put a dot here. He's willing to produce that many. As the price goes down, we can see at 3, 200, we can see as the price goes down that he could sell these hot dogs for, he's making fewer and fewer hot dogs. 2, 100, and 1, 0. And you connect these dots just like the demand curve and you end up with something called supply. And we put an S there. Here's the deal. This supply idea has very much to do with cost. This is why. Think about it. Here's this particular line and each one of these particular dots represents how much he would supply if he could sell it for hot dogs for these dollar amounts. So what's happening? When the price of a hot dog he could sell is two dollars, it's covering some of his costs. Remember there are these two costs. His opportunity costs and the marginal costs that have to do with uh, variable resources being placed into his hot dog making factory and they're relatively productive. Now, let's see what happens here. At $2, it covers some of his opportunity costs, but it's not going to cover his opportunity costs of sleeping. So he's not going to produce 600 hot dogs, which would take a lot of his time and his entrepreneurial effort, etc. Not only that, at $2, it's not going to cover a lot of people working on hot dogs machine, bumping into each other, not being very productive, etc. Those costs make the things very expensive to make. So with $2, he's only going to make 100 hot dogs. Plus at $2, there's not much incentive in terms of revenue, so he's not going to make that much. The idea is that underneath this supply curve has something to do with costs. Making a few hot dogs doesn't cost so much. And therefore, he's willing to make only a few hot dogs, but he'll make them at a lower price. As he increases his output levels to 200, to 300, to 400, his costs go up. So if you want him to produce more hot dogs, you'd better pay him a higher price. So if you want him to produce 200 hot dogs, you have to pay him $3 per hot dog. Why? Because the 200th hot dog takes time from him golfing. As a matter of fact, he puts more people in his factory and they're not quite as productive. So he's paying them the same wage, only they're not making as many hot dogs, so his costs are going up. And this happens each time he makes more and more hot dogs. So again, as he produces more hot dogs, these costs get higher and higher and higher. I'm sure you say, yeah, sure, Steve, but you know, I know that if you make more of something, the costs go down. And again, you have to think about it like this, that there's this cost structure that goes down and then back up again, and this is the up part, and economists are using supply curves to think about this up part. The main thing, again, is that costs are being represented by this supply curve. How much does it cost to make 100th hot dog about this much. How much does it cost to make the 200th hot dog about this much? This has to do with opportunity cost. It also has to do with where resources are valued. In other words, we've got these pigs going into this factory here. Let's draw a nice pig here. There we go. Here's a pig right here. And this pig is going into this factory and out comes these hot dogs. Now, as the hot dogs come out and the pigs go in, these pigs are worth something. And this pig is uh, good for doing lots of things. You could make bacon out of this pig. You could make uh, purses out of the pig skin. You could make sausage. But this guy's trying to make hot dogs. Now, if there's another guy over here making bacon, this is the bacon coming out of this thing, these two are kind of competing for this pig. What's going to happen to this pig? Is he going to make hot dogs or bacon, etc.? Well, at first, the bacon guy's willing to spend, you know, they're debating, you know, and the more and more pigs you buy, 
The more and more hot dogs you make, the more in demand this pig is, and these resource prices might go up. So as the more hot dogs you make, it might in general be there's more demand for pigs and prices go up for pig resources, etc. There's a kind of opportunity cost for the resource as well going on. Anyway, you know, supply is not easy. This is not an easy concept. The cost underneath the supply curve is key to understanding supply, though, and to understanding why equilibrium is so interesting, to understanding why supply and demand is so interesting, understand why markets are so interesting, and to understand why economics is such an interesting and powerful concept. It's because we have demand underneath, or benefit underneath the demand curve, and supply represents cost. So that's the key. Supply cost, demand benefit. It's not easy, but as supply increases, the cost of producing increases. That's why you need to pay this guy a higher price in order to induce him to make more hot dogs. Okay, that's enough for now. This might come into even clearer focus when we talk about next time, and that's shifting supply curves. And um, I'll see you there. Again, not easy, but hang in there. It's worth it.